You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today is the memorial of St. Catherine of Siena, the 14th century saint and doctor of the church. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You came to bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading this morning from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin by the name of Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, he stood up. He ordered the apostles to be put outside. And he said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Thutis appeared, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed. And those who were with him and were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean at the time of the census also drew people after him. But he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men, and let them go. For if this endeavor of this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were, they were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, beaten, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and they dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, 
both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I seek, dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this, <clears throat> this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek to dwell. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted. Wait for the Lord. One thing I seek well, in the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed with him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So when the men reclined, about 5,000 in number, then Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they'd had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. <clears throat> When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a consistent issue we sometimes have had in the church that um, Pope, uh, Pope Pius VI had addressed, and it was that sometimes with female saints, especially in the Middle Ages, um, both to make the people of the time more comfortable and the people who came after, there was sometimes their image was softened to some degree or made to seem that they were more um, as pious and as submissive and as quiet and docile and um, all, of, all those things as possible when that wasn't necessarily true. In the case of Catherine of Siena, it wasn't, that could be the farthest thing from the truth. 
She was, uh, among other things, what you might call a holy disruptor. She was holy uh, without question, without a doubt, and that is where her <clears throat> so much of her authority could come from. Um, but she also wasn't one to sort of stand by when God's will was not being done. Um, it's worth remembering her time period. She was born March 25th, uh, 1347 in Siena, Italy. Uh, and she was one of at least 25 siblings, possibly as many as 35, many of whom uh, at least half did not survive infancy. Um, but as she grew up, you know, she had this longing, this inclination towards the things of God. She was interested in having silence and having peace and contemplation. Uh, and so when she was challenged at the age of 16, her sister Bonaventura, uh, her sister died, and her parents and her sister's husband were interested in making a match and saying, well, you could have, you could marry Catherine instead. And the husband-to-be said, oh, I was very drawn to her long, flowing, beautiful hair. And so Catherine cut it all off. <laughs> she cut it all off because this wasn't the life that she felt God was leading her towards. It's not what she was leading her to. Uh, while her contemplative life, life was very rich, she began to feel called to also serve the poor and the world. She did this as a third-order Dominican which nowadays, you know, if people in the third order of an order might be a little less visible, but uh, back then they would often wear a, a distinctive habit. You would see them out in the streets, and you may not differentiate them from a nun, except that they're out in the world. Um, but uh, her family was growing concerned about her concern for the poor, uh, and almost chiding her for it, almost giving her a hard time, like, don't, you know, we have... We have some wealth, we have some opportunity here. You could pursue a life like all of these other wealthy people who are doing well for themselves. And so her siblings started to find that they would go home and in their closets they would look for their favorite sweater and their sweater was gone because Catherine took it and gave it away. <laughs> so Catherine was starting to take the family's resources even and giving those to the poor in order to not only help the poor, but help her family understand that what was important was God's will, not that their own will be done. Uh, and so from these stories, you know, of, of her youth to growing up and becoming a woman who had such, a, again, such authority by virtue of her holiness, by the, the consistent way she lived her life, that what seemed to be from the outside, what seemed to be a holy woman who was close to God, who heard the voice of God, that that was actually true, that she lived that way. She had the ear of everyone, so much so that she became a close advisor and confidant of Pope Gregory, uh, whom she convinced ultimately to move the papacy from where it had been in Avignon, uh, France, back to Rome. So she was a person of uh, yeah, great authority and great disruption. But, you know, when we ask and talk about Catherine of Siena, I think that's the most important thing, is she, I, she would be the last person to want devotion to her for the sake of herself. In other words, to look back at her and just say, as much as tempting as it is, what an amazing life, what an amazing woman. What we're interested in now, and especially from our young folks here, I think this is important for you, we're looking for the next holy disruptor. What's happening in your world and in your church that God does not approve of, that is not in the will of God? What's happening that, that, that Jesus has commanded us to do that is not being done? What status quo? What, what, what's the norm that people are living and pursuing that should not be lived and pursued? How can you use your voice to speak up to leaders, to speak up to me and say, hey, you've got this wrong? God is inviting you to become holy, he's inviting all of us to become holy, but he's not inviting us to become so silent that we just live our lives passively and quietly and what have you. If 
you feel something is amiss, Catherine would invite you to speak. And so that's part of our invitation today. How is God calling us to be holy disruptors so that the world, the church, all of God's creation uh, can attain the holiness to which he is calling it? Let us stand and bring our prayers to our loving Father who hears us. Oh, we pray for the church that we may each pursue the vocation to holiness and the call to be prophetic in our world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who lead us in our society that they too may do so in a way that protects the dignity of all life, especially the most vulnerable the poor and the oppressed. We praise the Lord. We pray for the sick, for all who suffer in mind and body and spirit. We pray especially for those suffering with addiction and from mental illness. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died, for all who have gone before us in faith. And today as we remember St. Catherine of Siena, who died only at the age of 33, uh, we remember young people, especially parents who have lost children. For them and for all of our beloved dead, we pray to the Lord. And let us pause for a moment and remember all of our prayers in silence. We pray to the Lord. We ask you, O oh good and loving Father, to hear our prayers if we make them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks for you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, in all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us. And even in this world, is nourish, it, it nourished the life of the sacred Catherine through Christ our Lord. Well, friends, this being Friday uh, after Mass, we'll process in silence to the chapel uh, for adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.